Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where today John Coleman and I are going to be speaking with Dr. Liz Lister about something important to you and to us. Dr. Liz, great to see you. Art well, says uh, something important to us, um, our age group, those people uh, arguably over 50, enjoying the second uh, act in their life. Um, hormones are, are an important part of our life, hormone replacement, men and women. Mm. And last time we got together, we talked about ways that drugs are delivered into our body, different methods, whether injections or oral or whatever. And I don't, we didn't touch on hormones specifically, um, but is hormone, hormones are so important to, to both men and women, particularly at our age. Absolutely. Our hormone levels decline over time, as we've talked about many times. And, uh, and testosterone is particularly important. Uh, it's important for women and definitely important for men. Talked about more for men uh, than it is for women. However, there's a lot of different ways to replenish testosterone. So I thought that would be fun to enlighten our audience about that in particular. Nice. Uh, it yeah. is. It is a good idea. What What's what is it about testosterone that makes it maybe hard to deliver? That's a very exactly the right question to ask, John, uh, because as we were talking about before in our other discussion of ways to take medications, the most common way that we're used to taking medications is orally, uh, but testosterone is one of those that gets broken down by the stomach acid and it cannot be taken orally, or at least let's just say it's not an efficient way, yeah. right? So there, there are definitely various ways. Men are probably more familiar with the different ways of using testosterone. The most commonly prescribed way of using testosterone for men is injection, intramuscular injection. It's often covered on insurance, Doctors are familiar with it, and it's prescribed. It's either a one every one or two weeks intramuscular injection. Some men go to the doctor's office to get the shot. However, most men are able to give themselves the shot, usually in the thigh, because when you're sitting, you can have easy access to your thigh muscle, uh, and you can give yourself the weekly injection. That's the most common way that men use testosterone. Now, I've seen lots and lots of commercials for testosterone. Uh, you know, um, do you have low T? You need fill in the blank of the, the drug. Right. And lots of, lots of over-the-counter, what do you call them, supplements that purport Boosters. to raise That's your right. testosterone. Mm. That's right. But those, Which, yeah. those, those are supplements oral. Those aren't are... really aren't really doing the job, are they? There's a lot of different herbal ingredients that have been suggested that they boost testosterone. I personally don't have any objection to any of them. I'm not aware of any bad danger uh, for the vast majority of people if they want to use those sort of things. However, as a hormone expert, I do like to go with what is most effective and most direct. Uh, so injection is an option. It's actually an option for women, but not that often uh, because the dosing for us as women is so much smaller. The alternatives, you mentioned TV commercials, another commercial product from a regular pharmaceutical product that's available for men to use is topical, the transdermal gels. I'm not a big fan of those. They tend to be low dose and the base tends to not be very nice. It's either sticky or doesn't have a nice smell to it. So when I use transdermal testosterone for my patients, women or men, I tend to go with a compounding pharmacy to use a really nice base that absorbs really well, the cream or the gel, and to be able to get a really good dose that is almost equivalent to the intramuscular. So those are a couple of really common ways. Another way that I use very commonly for women, for
For women, I tend to go with either transdermal or sublingual. Under the tongue, right? There's a whole way of delivering a lot of different vitamins, sure. supplements, as well as medications. Wait, and that also, the the, that, that also bypasses the liver, right? Because it's not That's going correct. in. It's not going into That's your stomach, exactly so it gets right. rid of those. Get, I paid attention All to. I, I paid attention to our right. our, our, our the discussion about good. medications. Good job. You get a gold star. All Thank right, you. Good job. That's exactly right. Anytime we're avoiding the stomach, we're avoiding that first pass effect. Very important for hormones. So intramuscular, through the skin, transdermal, or sublingual, all of those avoid that first pass effect. Couple of rules and guidelines for under the tongue. It's better to be sitting upright when you're doing something under the tongue. If you're lying back, the saliva generated is going to cause more swallowing of the active ingredient. So it's better to be sitting upright, better to avoid other things that stimulate, for example, chewing gum or eating food. If you're doing a, a vitamin or a supplement or a medication or something like testosterone under the tongue, uh, it's better to avoid those others. It's okay to use other sublingual, if you're taking a vitamin and the sublingual testosterone, those can go together. That's fine. Might as well get it all done at the same time. So that's a very efficient way. As you said, it's very important to avoid the first pass through the liver. One problem in particular with testosterone is that testosterone does not taste good. So the doses for men tend to be too high to make sublingual an acceptable way to have men use testosterone for, you know, I'm giving men a hundred milligrams, for example, either as a weekly injection or as daily through the skin for women, I'm normally giving between one and 10 milligrams. Oh, wow. One, wow. one is a pretty low dose. 10 is a pretty good dose. And then I've got that little range in between and they can disguise the compounding pharmacy makes that sublingual we call it a trochee. It's a little waxy tablet that dissolves under the tongue and they can put flavors in it. They can put a cherry flavor, they can put a peppermint flavor, uh, and they can disguise the taste of the testosterone. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and the men's dosage is so much larger uh, because it is the male hormone. Exactly. Uh, that they can't do that. Yeah, that's interesting. I never knew that um, testosterone was so different that it needed its own kind of delivery system and that it had options. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There's one more delivery system for women and men, and that is hormone pellet therapy. Pellets. Pellet therapy, pellets. They're literally pellets, a little bit bigger than a grain of rice, and they're made by a specialty compounding pharmacy compressed testosterone. The pellet is actually made of tightly, tightly, very specialized equipment, very highly regulated, compressed testosterone, office procedure, usually the flank pointing to the upper hip area, numb the skin, very tiny incision that you don't feel, a little instrument that allows me to put the pellets into that fatty tissue that most of us have at least a little bit of here. And the pellets dissolve over a few months. Oh. Not, not my favorite way to start for women in case they have side effects. Yeah. Women can get little facial hair or acne from it. So the pellets, I like to start with a topical gel or an under the tongue in case they have those side effects, really easy and quick to stop using it. Right. Men, men normally do just great and they really respond nicely to the testosterone treatment. And so I have had men choose the pellets as an initial way to use testosterone and men can get up to six months. So instead of having to give himself a shot in his thigh muscle every single week, yeah. a man can go five, six, 
months yeah. uh, in between getting the pellets. It does require coming to the office. So it does require having a doctor who's ha who has expertise in doing the hormone pellet therapy. Hormone pellet, ther pellet therapy for different medications has been around since the 1940s. So it's not new, but it's definitely not a very, it's kind of a well-kept secret. However, it is something that I enjoy offering in my practice for my patients. And there are quite a few of us doctors out there trained in doing hormone pellet therapy. So it's a very convenient way for people, especially if they've already tried other methods and they know that they like the, how they feel with testosterone, yeah. energy, brain sharpness, muscle building, stamina, brain sharpness, a lot of different uh, benefits of yeah. testosterone. Pellets can be a very nice option. Yeah, well, getting, getting as you've told us many times, getting your hormones in balance is really important. And uh, I can see the attraction to going into the office once every six months to get a pellet inserted versus a exactly. shot in the thigh every week. You know? Which, which, John, exactly. is not your which is not your favorite activity. You don't like needles. <laughs> yeah, that would not be your method yeah. of choice for sure. Needles, right. yeah. Ooh. Fascinating, fascinating. <laughs> So there is, so, is. So, so if you do if you do need testosterone therapy, uh, there are ways that are, quite frankly, uh, uh, not a problem for most men and women uh, to receive the therapy, and you shouldn't avoid it because you're worried about how you're going to have to receive uh, the testosterone itself. There are lots of different ways for you to deliver uh, the needed uh, medication. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.